Welcome to Plutus Project Based Learning 2023 from Gimbal Labs. Thank you for taking a look at Module 102. Over the last few lessons and mastery assignments, you've built your first transactions. And so far, what we've shown you is how to set variables in your terminal and then to copy and paste different Cardano CLI commands so that you can use them in the terminal. But often, we're going to reuse these commands. And that's why we wanted to wrap up this module with a quick look at some bash scripts for reusing some of the common commands, including transactions that we write with Cardano CLI. In the PPBL 2023 Plutus template, there is now a new directory called bash-scripts. If in a previous lesson you cloned this repository, you should be able to pull these changes like this. I can change directories into the Plutus template, and then I can run git pull to make sure that on my computer, I have all of the latest changes from the PPBL 2023 Plutus template. I can see here that I do have that bash scripts directory. And if I navigate via an integrated developer environment like VS Code, I can also see this directory of bash scripts and I can investigate any of these files. In this example, querytip.sh, you can see a command that we've used a few times during this module. And this is all a bash script is. Anything you could type on a command line can be written in a shell script file like this one, and then reused over and over again. Watch this. I do have a node running already. So if I change directory into bash scripts, and then I write bash query tip.sh, I should see that's what I would expect. Depending on how your operating system is set up, you might type bash and then the name of the file, or you might simply type dot and the name of the file. On this computer, I have it set up so I type bash. Now, I did get an error here. It says query tip sh line three, no such file or directory. Let's take a look at what's on line three of the query tip file. You can see it says source variables private dot sh. If you'd really like to get the most out of these scripts, you can set up a file called variables private. There's an example here called variables dash example dot sh. You can make a copy of it and then change the name to variables private. Then you could add some variables here that you might not want to share publicly. For example, the path to your node.socket file or information about your CLI wallet. There is a git ignore file in this repository. And right here, you can see that we ignore the variables private file so that it doesn't get pushed up to an online git repo. I recommend exploring these scripts on your own. Use the documentation below this video to see if you can get each script to work. And if you get stuck, be sure to ask questions. As this course continues, we will continue to start out by copying and pasting commands to the command line and providing scripts like these. If you want to practice learning more about Cardano CLI and scripting at the same time, Take a look at this send Lovelace preprod script. See if you can understand how it works. And then try to build a script like this for locking or for unlocking UTXOs from the Always Succeeds contract. Bash scripting is not essential to being a developer of any kind, but it can be a really nice way to automate processes and learn a little bit more about how tools work. Whenever I build a new smart contract, 
I build a set of accompanying bash scripts. This helps me make sure that my contract works as expected, and it helps me make plans for what I'll need to implement in the front end of a project. In module 201, we will start to look at how we can build transactions from a front end, and we will refer to our Cardano CLI commands and scripts like these to make plans for what we must implement in the front end. That's the end of module 102. I hope that you learned something along the way, and I really can't wait to hear your questions as we continue to learn together. All best, and see you soon.